what we're going to be going over here is a conceptual understanding of depreciation. And this is our problem here. This company has this uh, piece of equipment here and we know it has a, we're given that it has a seven year useful life here and we're also given the depreciation expense for each of those seven years here. But what we don't know is the equipment cost and the salvage value of that equipment. Those are unknown. So let's look at what we're given here. We're, uh, we're given the depreciation expense and we're giving it through three different methods here. The straight line method, the sum of years digits method, and a double declining balance or the 200% declining balance method. So just going them over here very briefly here, uh, for our straight line method, our depreciation base is really our cost minus our salvage value divided by the uh, number of years of life here. And that's going to give us a constant depreciation expense each year here. And then uh, for each of those seven years, and then the total appreciation expenses is $168,000. And that's really the cost minus its salvage value here. And that uh, the, uh, uh, would be the same here. Total appreciation would be the same for each of our methods here. Now going over our sum of years digits just briefly here again our depreciation base is our cost minus our salvage value and then we take it times a uh, fractional amount here. The remaining years divided by the sum of years digits that fractional amount gets taken by the cost minus its salvage value here, our basis each year. And now uh, this is what's key here with the um, declining balance method here. What we work with is a cost here. We start out with our cost here and then uh, to determine our depreciation and then we take it in two times in this case the salvage value percentage here. So our salvage value percentage we were given over seven years was 14.3 percent per year. Two times that's going to give us 28.6 percent. But we start out with this cost here times that percentage here and then we determine our depreciation expense each year here. Now uh, with the declining balance here and the sum of years digit we have accelerated depreciation. That is we have more depreciation earlier in the um, life here and then later here whereas the straight line we have a constant depreciation. So let's go back and look at our problem here. So what is the equipment cost? Well we can determine that using this de declining balance depreciation method and the key point is here uh, with the declining balance method it does not deduct the salvage value in computing the depreciation base uh, for this first year here. So let's go look at how we calculate that. So with the straight line method, remember we had one uh, one seventh of a year or over seven years here we're going to get uh, the division here is going to be 14.3 percent per year and then uh, for a double declining rate it would be two times that here for 28.6 percent here for our decline a 200 percent declining rate here. So here's our uh, here's our relationship here. Our cost and that's our beginning cost here times 28.6 percent here. Uh, that double declining rate is going to equal the first year's depreciation. So we're given the first year's depreciation here off our schedule at $57,142. So our cost here is simply just taking do our manipulations here. So our cost would be the the $57,142 divided by our depreciation here, uh, the de double declining rate here of 28.6% and that gives us a cost here of $200,000. And we can see that down here on our depreciation schedule as well here. Uh, our rate here was 28.6% depreciation expense $57,142. So uh, taking the cost that we calculated here at $200,000 times that rate here gives us our depreciation expense of $57,142. So knowing we determined our rate here, we knew our depreciation expense, so we we're able to de determine the cost here on this piece of equipment. So now for our next question here. What is the salvage value? Well, we know that our total depreciation here equals our cost minus our salvage value. So to determine our salvage value just manipulate your equation here bring your total depreciation over to this side move the salvage value over here so you're going to get our cost we calculated our cost here at 200,000 and we know what our total depreciation is that come off our depreciation expense schedule here of 168,000 so the difference gives us our salvage value here of $32,000 so we salvage uh, determined our salvage value here uh, based on the cost that we calculated over here and then knowing our 
total depreciation. So the next thing that we want to look at here is we really want to look at uh, these various uh, methods here of depreciation. And first we want to determine here the highest charge to income here in year one here, and then the highest charge to income in year five here. So what we're really looking at is uh, our accelerated depreciation here between our declining balance are some of your digits here and compare that to our straight line here. So in each case what we would, would do is just simply compare our different depreciation um, expenses here. Straight line 24, some of your digits for the first year 42 and for the declining balance it was 57,142. So the highest amount here would go to our declining balance here. And then for year 5 again just make our comparison here to straight line 24,000 and then the sum of years digits was 18 and declining balance here was 14. So the point that they're trying to make here, we're trying to make here is that uh, with our accelerated depreciations here of the declining balance and the sum of years digits here, uh, we have a we have a higher depreciation rate here early in the life of the assets here and as we move down our chart here we get lower depreciation charges compared to the straight line here where it's just the constant depreciation charge. So what you want to do here when you're having to make these comparisons, you have to calculate your depreciation expense for each of those years here and using your different methods here and then you can make your comparison here to determine which one has diff what the what the difference is between of them when you're looking for your depreciation expense each year. Okay, so now we're going to move on here to determine our our book values here and our accumulated depreciation and see how we can calculate any uh, how they affect any gains or losses here if this asset is sold. Okay, now knowing the cost that we've calculated here and all the depreciation expense that we're given uh, on a yearly basis for each of these methods here, now we can calculate the accumulated depreciation and the book value or the carrying value here. So let's just look at our straight line method here. So we we're given here, we were given our depreciation expense each year here. So accumulated depreciation, that's simply the uh, uh, sum of the amounts at the end of each year here. So for like year two here, our total total accumulated depreciation would be the 24,000 the first year here and a 24,000 for the second year so we got 48,000 here in accumulated depreciation and the book value is simply the beginning balance in this case uh, for the year's year, first year here it was our cost of 200,000 less the depreciation for the year here of 24,000 gives us a book value here of 176,000 and we just proceed on down here in that fashion here so okay uh, now we're going to go and look at our questions here. What method produces the highest book value at the end of year three here? Now, well, the answer to that is the method that yields the lowest accumulated depreciation at the end of year three, which will be the straight line here. So uh, the book value here, the highest book value in this case would be, uh, in this case, our cost here. Uh, less our lowest accumulated depreciation was for a straight line that give us our highest book value here. So let's just look at it really briefly here. So um, her for the straight line here, our accumulated depreciation, the lowest amount here was uh, in this case it was 72,000 and we'll compare them to the other ones here and that gives us our highest a book value here at $128,000. And just going down to 200 200% declining balance just to look at that you can see those amounts here uh, for year three the accumulated depreciation was a well above 72,000 here for the straight line and then going down here to some of your digits you can see 108,000 here accumulated depreciation well above the 72,000 here for the straight line all right so let's go back to our next question here what method produces the highest gain or the lowest loss if the asset is sold at the end of year three here? Well, the answer to that here is the method which yields the lowest book value here at the end of year three, and it's going to be the 200% declining balance here. And first, go through our, our, uh, our calculations here. So the highest gain here would be our cost here. Uh, subtracting out the highest accumulated depreciation that's going to equal the lowest book value so just going through our examples here for our I'm showing here straight line 200 percent declining balance and some of years digits here our machine cost just say it was 200,000 here and then our accumulated depreciations under each of those methods here 
I have shown here. And then the difference between our cost here and accumulated depreciation gives us our book value here. And you can see, let's just look at it here. Straight line book value 128,000. Uh, declining balance here. Um, book value here at 73,000 and then some of years distribute a book value here at 92,000. And just for example, let's say we received cash here for the sale of this asset here. And again, that was like at the end of year three, 150,000. So what we have to do is just compare our book value here with the cash received. So, and the difference would be the gain here. So the gain is the difference between the proceeds from the sale and the carrying amount or the book value shown on the company's book. So we've got our book value here and, and then when we do our arithmetic here we're going to find out our largest gain here was at the 200 percent declining balance here 77,000 when we compare a book value to the cash received here. Straight line 22,000, some of years digit 58,000. So our sum of years digit, or uh, sum of years digit 58,000. So the declining balance here was the largest gain here at 70, 77,000 dollars. Okay, let's just go back through this once here, once again here. So um, looking at our depreciation schedule. Let's go down here and look at our 200% declining balance here. Uh, remember that is the one here where we had to uh, calculate what method produces the highest gain here and that was the uh, uh, method here which yields the lowest book value here at the end of of course year three that we were looking at here. So the lowest book value gives us our highest gain here and that was with our declining balance method. And Again, I'm just showing this, going through this example here as a conceptual idea, how we uh, use our different, how we can calculate our cost, our salvage values, and our accumulated depreciation and our book value or our carrying value given a particular depreciation schedule. So this is uh, trying to get a conceptual understanding of what's going on here. And then for one last thing, since we didn't look at this sum of years digits, uh, much here below. We can, I'm just showing that. Here was our depreciation schedule here that we were given here. Then we determine our cumulative amount, simply uh, the sum amount here at the end of each year here. And then the book value, again, same deal. We take ever whatever our carrying value is and subtract out our depreciation for the year here and that gives us our book value. So I've just gone over this problem here so um, you can get some conceptual idea here and for our how depreciation works here between our three different methods here. Some straight line method shown here, our 200 percent declining balance method here, and then our sum of years digits method.